Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com. Today we're going to break down the all-new Shark Racer Pro GP helmet. Okay, the all-new Shark Race R Pro GP retails for $9.99 to $10.99. Please understand we don't update videos for pricing changes, only if the product itself has been completely redesigned. Let's start off with some facts. This helmet is 3.6 pounds on our digital shipping scale in a size medium. It is both ECE and DOT certified, so you're going to be able to use this here in the U.S. and any of the track day racing orgs or, of course, street ride in it. It is glasses compatible. Okay, we're probably going to show you some footage of that right now. I tried this at my desk with my readers. Yes, I need those so I can see my computer screen. And then, of course, we tried them here in the video room with a pair of sunglasses we've been using for the last several years to test compatibility. I give them an A plus on that. They bill it as glass compatible. It's easy in, easy out, and the glasses sit exactly where you want them to. Double D-ring retention system, fully removable, replaceable, washable liner is included with this. This is Bluetooth compatible. Shark has their own proprietary system if that's the direction you want to go in. Or it has the pockets to allow for installing any of the common universal units that are already on the market today. Carbon slash fiberglass shell. There are two shell sizes for this helmet. Extra small through medium is going to be shell number one and then large through 2XL is going to be shell number two. Included with this purchase, the helmet's gonna come with a fog-free class one optics clear shield. It also includes, and we have it installed now because it looks amazing, the uh, dark smoke, also class one optics. They do note in their literature, you know, this is not road legal, they probably have that in there. For the people that drink kerosene and eat crayons that would ride around at night with a dark smoke screen, you know, certainly I'm sure you could, you know, you can use it on a racetrack in the daytime. You could probably use it on the street. Other things that are included with this helmet. There is a chin curtain extender, right, that really is going to seal this thing up at uh, the base of the neck here. And then there is a fog-free mask. You partially remove your cheek pads, slide this bad boy in there, and it really gets up in here like this and directs, every time you exhale, it directs it downward to for the worst of conditions to help keep this thing performing in a fog-free manner. A little wrench to adjust the shield tension. We're going to talk more about that as we get a little deeper into this video. And there's these three little foam pads they go right here in this pocket, in the chin bar of the helmet. I believe those are there to cushion if you're in a full tuck and your helmet is contacting the fuel tank of the motorcycle that you're on. Those are going to be there to kind of cushion that. Look at this helmet bag. That is included with this helmet. This thing is primo, man. Super nice. Still includes the helmet sock. When I come back, we're going to talk about the ever-important sizing and fit. Okay, sizing and interior shape of this helmet. I measure 58 centimeters on the money. Over the years, I've had probably more helmets than most. Probably a fair statement. And I've definitely tried on probably more helmets than almost anyone out there. That's probably a very fair statement. 58 centimeters on the button. Their size chart puts me in a medium. This thing fits and feels exactly as I would expect. It's on-off effort leans to the aggressive side. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when you pull it over, it takes a little effort. When you pull it off, you know you're pulling it off. There's benefits behind that, right? It really cradles your head and your face. So it's going to seal everything up here along the base of your neck and get you much more quiet and stable operation. One of the things Shark is famous for, and I've not ridden this one yet, and based on the fact that now I'm a mechanic and a crew chief, you know, I don't know that I will get the opportunity to ride this, but I rode in its predecessor and the ones before that. Their aerodynamics are amazing. I have to imagine that this spoiler only builds upon that, especially, you know, if you're on a thousand or something, you're at the end of the straightaway or say you're at Daytona. We just watched Daytona this weekend and you're on the banks, you know, it's just going to add stability. 
but that on off effort is really something that I want to note. You can see, you know, how thick that neck roll is. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, if you don't like a helmet that's maybe it takes a little more effort to put on and a little more effort to take off, this may not be the helmet for you. If you're the rider who, what you're most concerned about is performance when you're riding in it, you know, how quiet is it? Sharks are also famously quiet for how well they ventilate. They're famously quiet, and that's going to be partially due to how they seal up around the neck roll and how well they perform aerodynamically. That has a dramatic impact on the noise level of a helmet. If you want to seal it up even more in the chin area, you're able to install this optional, and this is included, chin curtain extender. Kind of snaps right in, in this area, and it's going to bring it back to about that level there. So that is huge. That's going to be completely sealed up in this area. So intermediate oval head shape fits true to size with a more aggressive on-off effort. Ventilation is certainly, you know, a really important feature, especially when you get to a premium helmet like this. Once again, I'm going to state, I've not ridden this, but I rode in the predecessor, which was very, very similar, especially in this front profile. Your intake vents are found here in the chin. Closed, intermediate wide open. This has a filter behind it. That's a replaceable filter. If that's something you want to service, you can do that. You've got extractor vents right here, Venturi style. You've got an intake vent up here. And that kind of has that same, this one, I mean, I guess you could put it in the middle. You know, there's not really a detent there. This is more of an on or off. And then up here on the very top, this one does have a middle position. Two intake vents there, Venturi style extractor event vent there, and then I believe it's hard to see underneath here, but there are also some that are up underneath the spoiler in that area. And these work in conjunction with the channeled EPS. We're going to show you as we get a little deeper into this video. But this is a, a good, excellent venting helmet with a very strong aerodynamic profile. Okay, now let's talk about the shield change, and we're going to segue from that right into removing the interior to give you a real close look inside out from this helmet. So your shield, we talked about this before, this is distortion free. They have some of the best optics in the industry. Shark has always done that. And they have a very intelligent shield mechanism. There are detents. Kind of show you those there. There's a lock. The switch to release the lock is over here on the left side. Release that, your first detent there, second there, third one there, fourth one, you are wide open. Now to remove the shield, you need to rotate this lever forward, do that on both sides. You already saw that jump out, this one jumped out. And then you're able to just kind of rotate it up and pull it right off. Let's give you a kind of a look, see at what's happening here. That little lever on the outside rotates this cam that locks in place to reinstall. Super simple. Line these slots up with the mounts, push back, and then you want to be kind of in this downward position, right, like right about there, rotate back, allows that cam to drop in there. Anytime you do a shield change, you always want to test it before you go out and ride in it. The shield is also adjustable for tension of the detents, as well as how hard it seals against the gasket here. Please note, from the factory, this comes good to go, right? Their quality control there is strong. They make sure the shields are adjusted correctly. To adjust the tension, and there's literature that comes with the helmet, of the detents, there's a little screw right here. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And then if you need to adjust how tightly the helmet shield seals, and with a shark, I've never had to do this, right? But this is a cam, you're able to loosen this up, move this around, right, and change the position of the shield. The likelihood of you having to do that is probably not very high. 
Something I do want to talk about too, and you see this ginormous sticker on here. This is not part of the graphic. This is meant to be taken off. This is a breakaway spoiler. If you have an accident, the last thing you want this to do is have any real influence on how your head and neck move. So they've designed this to break away, as they say in the literature, rather easily. I'm not crash tested and I've not yanked it off, right? But I do trust the fact that they've designed this to be breakaway. Enough so that they put a little sticker here letting you know not to be carrying your helmet around like this, okay? The reason that sticker is there is odds are if you're holding your helmet constantly like this, you're probably going to be dropping your helmet while holding on to the spoiler that snapped off of it as designed. Okay, so please be aware of just that. Fully removable liner. And how you start with that is we're going to begin here with our neck roll. Kind of grab that right there on the side. And I'm going to rotate around the back of the helmet up to the front. And grab a hold of it right up here in the chin. You can see that tongue there is pretty long, so it just works better if you start from the side. Come around like so. You can see the quality on the fabrics used. They use all very high-end stuff. Quality of this is excellent. To remove the cheek pads, we have a combination of three snaps, as well as a little patch of Velcro. This is harder to show on video. We'll do the best we can. What I like to do is I like to get my thumb down in there in between the backing of the cheek pad and the snap itself. Kind of pry that loose. The third one is up here on the top. A little Velcro patch. And once I get this off I'll show you guys exactly what this looks like. Here are your three snaps. Here is your Velcro patch. Just like with the neck roll, the quality of that is really good. You can also remove, and this is for, you know, obviously cleaning purposes. There's a little pull strap here and some Velcro on the helmet strap cover. We'll go over to the other cheek pad. Just simply repeat that process, just a mirror image. You know, this is a great way. These helmets are expensive. When you're talking, this is $1,000. And I think, you know, offering you guys a look from the inside out before you pull the trigger on it is beneficial. You know, you want to have an idea of what does the quality of this thing, you know, look like. To remove the top pad at the back here, we have two snaps. Kind of the same process I showed you earlier. those both disengaged. To remove the front part of the top pad and the brow, kind of get your fingers behind here, lift up on this and pull back. It's going to pull this out of the channel that it clips into. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here that this is all molded to line up with the channeled EPS and the built-in ventilation of the helmet to take maximum effect of that. And now look in here. Can you get a good close-up of that, Lucas? Look at how deep those channels are. So that's going to serve multiple purposes. One is in the event of an impact, those are like shock absorbers, okay? They just kind of collapse and then collapse against each other to work to manage the energy of the impact itself. And also, they provide an excellent opportunity for the ventilation to just flow right through. I don't know if you can see or not, but up here in the brow of the helmet, there are two holes right here. Yeah. And then in this area here, the front of the crown, we have a total of four holes. It's going to get probably harder and harder to see. And then in the very back here, the back of the crown, we have another four holes. I think Lucas is kind of like, yeah, maybe I can see it. I'm not sure. But nevertheless, a lot of ventilation built into this helmet. If you're going to use the proprietary shark device, this little piece of the EPS here in the back, this would actually be pulled out. The unit slides into there. 
the pockets for the speakers are right here and molded into the EPS. That's pretty standard stuff. You know, we've shown you guys that on a number of helmets. If you're going to actually service the filter, you know, I don't know really anybody that uh, I never did it on the one I had, just being transparent there. But this thing just pops out. Let's see if I can get it. That's a little filter. I mean, if it gets all nappy, you could probably just pull it out and just, just, just toss it right. I don't, know, I don't know how realistic replacing that is for a lot of people. You know, especially when you consider most other helmets, it's just wide open. It's just free flowing. So we're to the point now where I'm going to tell you, well, what do I think? I'm going to confess again that I didn't have the opportunity to ride in this one. I'm not 100% sure, given the things that I'm doing today as compared to the things that I used to do, that I'm going to get a chance to ride in it. That said, I did ride in its predecessor. It's super similar with the biggest difference being this massive spoiler on the back. What I can tell you with Shark is they do a tremendous amount of aerodynamic testing. You know they have GP riders. You know, there's very little doubt, if any doubt in my mind, that this is going to add stability to this helmet when you're at speed. I like a helmet that fits really tight. That's always been my preference. This one gives me that real racy, super secure fit where it's almost like an extension of your head versus, you know, wearing a hat or wearing a helmet. The flip side to that is if you're sensitive to the on-off effort, you know, if, if you need it to go on and off a little easier because that just freaks you out when it's, it's tight, you know, both on and off, this may not be the helmet for you. When I look at this whole package now and I go through it and I've worn it long enough, who I see this working for probably best is track riders or racers or maybe even street riders that they want that really form-fitting, super tight helmet that has a great aerodynamic signature with strong ventilation. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. If I missed anything here, I'm happy to answer that and help you choose the right helmet for your next ride.